Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Eco Photo Fest, all of which has gone virtual this year. We've combined our two uh, festivals, Eco Fest and Photo Fest, into one fun uh, time for everyone to participate in. Thank you for uh, tuning in today for our speaker, Lisa High, with Queen Bee Honey Remedies. Lisa is uh, all, has a partner uh, interview as well, Clint Weaver, a beekeeper with R. Weaver Apiary. And you can click on his presentation, which is right here under the same tab. So be sure and watch both presentations. Uh, I will also remind you, if even though you've probably read much of our uh, welcome uh, literature, be sure and uh, tune in live on October 15th at 6 p.m. to hear from Lisa and Clint Weaver uh, to be able to answer and be a part of a Q&A panel uh, that we've called Health, Wellness, and Fix-It panel. So be sure and tune in on October 15th at 6 p.m. and you will be able to register right here under this same tab for that and you'll get a Zoom uh, invitation to be able to participate. So uh, today we're going to hear from again, Lisa High with Queen Bee Honey Remedies. Lisa, welcome and thank you so much for participating in our event today. Thank you, April. And um, my company's name is Queen Bee Honey Remedies. Um, I've been a student of herbalism and uh, natural remedies and healing uh, since I was a teenager and um, I used to live in Grimes County and I still have acreage out there. When I was living out there, I became really good friends with the Weaver family and they have an apiary and their whole family has a long history of beekeeping that's very interesting. Um, and Clint will probably touch on some of that in his video as well. But um, through them, I started using their raw honey to um, come up with all sorts of healing um, salves and tonics and herbal infusions. Um, I do have a shop at the Texas Renaissance Festival. I also have a shop at the Sherwood Forest Renaissance Festival. And um, I have a stall at the Bastrop Farmer's Market, the 1832 beautiful Bastrop Farmer's Market that I really enjoy. Um, and we can go ahead and pull up the first slide, April. So this is a, uh, my sign that I have at the Texas Renaissance Festival. If you ever see this, come on in. It was hand carved by a really uh, talented wood carver out at the festival named Dave Love. Um, and I'll show you some shots from the apiary now. April, if you'll go to the next slide. Here's some shots of just our front yard out there. It's just a gorgeous place to be. The bees are kept um, all over uh, in meadows, all over Washington County, Grimes County, Waller County. Um, but this is where, this location is where people can come take their seminars, take workshops, pick up bee supplies. They can also, um, by bees. They breed queen bees here, the Weaver family does. And um, yeah, next slide. This is just a funny picture that uh, they took out in the bee yard with uh, Torin covered in bees, one of the workers out there. Next slide. And this is them uh, filling up their smokers so that they can just go check on some of our meadow fed bees um, to make sure that every all the hives are doing well. Uh, and they just calm them down with that smoke before they head in there. Next slide. I wanted to talk a little bit about why I use honey in um, in natural remedies. Um, it's because raw honey has all of these wonderful things in it. Um, the bee pollen has minerals, vitamins, a lot of things that are very hard to get 
in other things. Um, antioxidants that fight free radicals therefore are going to be anti-cancer in your body when you ingest honey. Uh, minerals that are hard to find, especially potassium, is hard to get um, from eating other things. Uh, vitamins, B6, a ton of amino acids, which are also things that are hard to get into your body in large amounts. Next slide. I use my honey in a lot of uh, skincare and face masks and scrubs at my shops. Um, putting honey on your skin, it's like nothing that you felt before. It does amazing things for your face. It makes your pores look smaller. It moisturizes in a way that it's, it's hard to describe while also just like taking away shine. It's, it's the weirdest thing, but it's wonderful for your skin. And it also really helps heal wounds and burns. I'm sure that you guys have already heard about the, the putting honey on burns thing. Um, well, for wounds that are having a hard time healing, especially for people who have immune disorders or diabetes, honey can really help because it's antibacterial, antibiotic, um, all of those things. So um, at my shop, you'll find lots of different, um, not only salves with honey in them, but I use them in face masks and scrubs as well. Next slide. Raw honey, people are always asking me at the markets and stuff like, oh, well, you know, what makes it raw? And basically it's um, not heated past the point of killing um, the nutritional value and all the enzymes and things like that that are in it. Um, so we just basically warm it enough to get it through a filter to filter out, you know, the bee parts that are in the raw honey and then it's all yours. Um, but raw honey is anti-cancer, it lowers your cholesterol, it boosts your immunity, it's an anti-inflammatory and that is really important for all of us these days. I feel like everybody's got a lot of inflammation from the diets that Americans have in general. It promotes digestive health. It stabilizes your blood sugar. This is something that's really important with people who are struggling with diabetes because it can really level you out. And like I said before, um, it does help externally with um, any sores that you're getting from diabetes as well as taking it internally. Um, and also honey is an antiviral, uh, antifungal and an antibacterial. And um, processed honey is not really honey at all anymore once they're done with it. You find most processed honeys aren't even coming from America. Most of them are coming from overseas. Um, China produces a lot of honey and they're, or not real honey, but processed honeys and their practices are not the best for the health and of bees. Uh, they, they have a lot of questionable practices uh, from what I've read when it comes to the way that they harvest the honey. Um, anyways, so yeah, they, they put high fructose corn syrup in it a lot of times and it's completely void of any of the vitamins and good things that it, it had before in it. Um, all right, next slide. Honey, it's the only food that's produced by an insect and consumed by humans. Also, um, it contains every necessary substance to sustain life. I have read a couple of articles on them finding honey in Egyptian tombs as well that was 3,000 years old and it's still completely edible. I'm not sure what it looked like anymore, but it was still edible. So honey virtually never goes bad. It just kind of changes its form. You know, sometimes it can be liquid. Sometimes it turns into more of a solid. I'm sure that the honey in the tombs was pretty solid, but you know, probably like a hard candy. <laughs> Next slide. 
All right, so here is some of my products. Here's a little microcosm of what you would find if you went into any of my shops or maybe even the markets that carry my um, products, such as the Royal Tomato, which is pretty much just the best little grocery store in Texas here in Smithville. I'm also at Ready Mart in LaGrange, which is an all local um, and fresh produce and meats market that just opened in LaGrange and the people who run it are really great. And it's a great little store too. And also you can find my lollipops at um, Radiate Mama uh, that's opening on Main Street in Bastrop pretty soon. But so I sell raw honey and I make all sorts of different creamed honeys. Depending on the season, I kind of get inspired to do a lot of different stuff. Um, but I usually always have plain. I have hot pepper honeys that I make, uh, cinnamon honey. Uh, you'll just have to find out what I've got that week. Um, I make honey lollipops, which are really great for soothing your throat. Um, my lollipops do contain sugar as well as honey. It's pretty much like half and half. And then I use food grade essential oils to um, flavor them. And uh, my, I also do seasonal flavors with that. So you never really know what you're gonna find as far as my lollipop flavors. But my standards are definitely, I have a, um, my version of Thieves Oil Lollipop and I make an orange blossom lollipop that's really popular as well. Um, I make honey salves such as calendula healing balm. I make a black walnut salve that is great for any um, fungal infections. I happen to have uh, the only black walnut that they've been able to find in Central Texas and um, the Texas Forestry Service uses it to reintroduce black walnuts into um, the areas of Central Texas that they believe they used to be in because they were all cut down. But I use my black walnut because it produces a ton of walnuts to make um, these healing ointments and I also make tinctures of the black walnut as well because it contains a chemical called juglone, I believe it's pronounced, and it's the strongest, um, oh, it, it gets rid of intestinal parasites and it's also an antifungal so you can use it on all sorts of fungal infections of the feet and body and insides anyways i also make lip balms in lots of different flavors that you will find at my shop um my Herbal infusions are very popular. I make lots of different flavors of that as well seasonally. They're great in cocktails, over ice cream, oatmeal. You just got to get creative with it. And I love making the herbal infusions because um, there's just so many possibilities. And there's a lot of medicinal ones that I make as well, like a, a throat soothing one with chamomile and licorice root. Um, I started making these herbal um, sipping vinegars. They're called oxymels. Um, it's kind of a word that doesn't get used anymore because herbal sipping vinegars sort of went out of style. Um, I think that at the turn of the century in the late 1800s or something like that, but they have had been popular healing remedies all the way from the middle ages through the 1800s. And they're making a comeback. Um, and they're great because you can get your apple cider vinegar and your honey and medicinal herbs daily in a shot. Um, I take them often because it's got a ton of immune building. Um, you know, you can build your immune system daily taking these tonics. And a lot of people have heard of fire cider that's getting pretty popular now. And I make one of those as well as um, I also make 
a few other flavors as well. And you'll also find, because I am an artist as well, I have another business um, that I do art. I try to incorporate some of my art into my um, honey shops as well by making some like bee themed cards and, and stuff like that. Next slide, April. This is a picture of me at my shop at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Um, I love being there. It's so fun and I really get to um, express myself while educating everyone on all of these um, natural remedies for um, skin and body. Next slide. This is a shot of um, the other side of my shop. Um, you see lots of different colors in the honey bottles. We carry varieties um, sometimes, um, but as well, we've got honey that is coming from different hives. We've got some different seasons mixed in there. I particularly like to set aside some of the later season honey from the year before to really give it that contrast in the booth um, with the darker honeys and the lighter honeys and um, yeah, so that's what my shop looks like. Next slide. Here's some close ups of um, this is my lavender and hibiscus herbal infusion bottles. Um, I started a line of Texas foraged infusions and just a line of Texas foraged things. I really want to go in that direction with finding the, um, th the plants that are here. Um, for us to use and utilize. Um, one of my favorite Texas foraged um, products that I've got right now is a juniper berry infusion. And I muddle the juniper berries and let it sit in the honey. Um, and this is what I do for all of the herbs that I make the infusions with. I let it sit in the honey for a month or more, depending on how long I've got uh, to let it sit. And then I just uh, strain the herbs out and the honey has taken on the um, flavor, color, uh, the medicinal properties that are in whatever it soaked in as well um, into the honey and it's just uh, the possibilities are kind of endless for taking desserts to the next level or cocktails or you know whatever you want to do i bake with it a lot of times too if i want to make lavender cookies or or something like that and the other picture here is a, a picture of some of my um my fire cider that i make and um, that fire cider is what you do is you take apple cider vinegar and I use all organic everything whenever I make my products. Um, and you take the apple cider vinegar, you put onion, jalapeno, horseradish, garlic, lemons, herbs, um, there's lots of different recipes uh, that people use to make their favorite fire cider. Um, and you let it sit, a lot of people bury it under the ground for 20 days. I have a pier and beam house, so I just stick it under my house where it's nice and cool for about 20 days. And then I strain it, I mix it with a bunch of raw honey for a very long time like this. And then uh, I pour it into bottles and it's so delicious. I really love it, um, it's great as not only to take a shot of, you can take it in switchel form, which is uh, pouring a little bit of club soda with it and just sipping on that as like a cocktail alternative. Or um, it's, I hear that it's very good in Bloody Marys as well. Next slide. Here are two pictures of more of my products. Um, I'll start with the Yopon. I started roasting Yopon just a couple of months ago. Um, and I love it. I am obsessed with it. Yopon is something that we have a ton of here in the Lost Pines area, as well as, you know, it grows a lot in the Houston area as well. And I've been harvesting mine from my property that I have in North Houston. I have two acres, um, as well as some of my friends here in Tahitian 
will let me come and and gather Yopon there as well. And Yopon is the only caffeinated plant in North America. Um, it was very, very popular with, uh, for 300 years or so, um, it, it fell out of favor for mostly political reasons, I believe. Um, they wanted to start importing teas in so that they could get the taxes from, from that. And it just sort of fell out of the cool thing to drink. Native Americans have been drinking this for a very long time as well. Um, and I like it roasted. There's lots of different roasts that you can do, or you can just drink it green. The Native Americans would roast it pretty dark from what, I, what I've read, and then simmer it for about 15 minutes. The flavor is amazing. It's um, a little bit, if it's roasted, it's a little bit like coffee, black tea, and rooibos uh, combined, but it's also really light in flavor. It's not heavy in flavor. It just, um, it has that little bit of a smoky flavor when you roast it. And drinking it, it has about as much caffeine as yerba mate does. So it's very caffeinated. Um, I make just a little bit whenever I need a pick me up in the middle of the day. It's got a lot of, it's a brain stimulant. It also releases the same um, chemical in your brain that chocolate does that makes you feel happy. Uh, so it's an anti-inflammatory as well, and it has anti-cancer properties. It's a very medicinal, very delicious local thing that we have here that a lot of people just don't know about. Um, and I sell this at my shops um, at the farmer's market. Uh, I love it. And then I have a shot up of my lollipops. Um, I make lots of different flavors of these depending on the season. Like I said, here you can see I've got Thai chili uh, lollipops with some chocolate peppermint. Seems like it might have been around Christmas time last year at the Texas Renaissance Festival. All right, next slide. And here is um, some of my thyme and sage honey syrup. I get this thyme and sage from the Smithville Community Gardens as well as I grow a little bit in my garden, but my gardens don't look nearly as good as the Smithville Community Gardens do. So I usually go gather a little bit from, from there as well. And um, it's just another way for me to try to utilize the things that are around me to um, provide he natural healing um, to people who, uh, you know, want to boost their immune system daily to keep from getting very sick um, and stuff like that. Uh, my, all of my products are mostly plastic free. My whole display that I have, it's I'd say 98% plastic free, except for these uh, little caps on these bottles here. Even my lollipops are wrapped in biodegradable cellophane. And that's really important to me. Um, but I hope that you guys will stay tuned for Clint's video coming up next. And if you wanna find any of my products, please stop by uh, the Sherwood Forest Renaissance Festival if we are open by springtime or the 1832 Bastrop Farmers Market or Ready Martin LaGrange or right here in Smithville, the Royal Tomato. That was fascinating and I'm now hungry because that all looks so delicious. <laughs> I definitely must try the Yopon um, tea. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'll bring one up for you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I want to again thank uh, Lisa High with, uh, excuse me, with Queen Bee Honey uh, Remedies and remind you as well that Clint Weaver, the beekeeper and owner of R Weaver Apiaries, but will uh, has a video that accompanies this particular video that you just watched. So be sure and click on that to find out about the apiary, apiary um, as presented by Clint Weaver. And then both 
Clint and Lisa will be available for actual live Q&A on October 15th at 6 p.m. You can register for that right here under the same tab where you watched these videos. Uh, so be sure and join us for that, for our health, wellness, and fix it um, panel. And on the 13th as well, we have um, a panel called The Natural World, which uh, has several other panelists on there, all of which you can watch under the various tabs that you've seen on this page. Thank you again, Lisa, for joining us today. And um, I, I appreciate all of you for being here today. Please enjoy all of our videos and, and enjoy all of our um, panelists as well on the 13th and 15th or join us as well on the 14th for our Outdoor Tourism Roundtable. Thank you all, and uh, we'll see you next time.